All right. <coughs> uh, so one very important thing that I realized when I was looking at children, uh, you know, children in the rural travel areas, is that they, they they are only doing one activity, and that is called trying to make sense of the world. This is all what they are doing. So everything that they were doing was is about what is this world about? And, and of course, equipping them to understand the world. There are two things that happen simultaneously. One is to create abilities within them to understand the world. And in that process, understand the world. It's a simultaneous process. Uh, so naturally, drawing is also a cognitive activity provided we don't interfere. Uh, but one, one oh, very important thing is that drawing is not a natural response of children. Drawing is a very, very new activity and uh, and of course, traditionally older people used to draw some drawings, but very few, not all cultures and and most of them were not drawing in the sense that we understand drawing. They were not line drawings, you know, depending upon the material they were using, it was making them do, uh, you know, marking in a certain way. For example, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, the Vorlis, they were not drawing. They were actually using paste and, and putting it actually. This is not uh, drawing in the sense we understand lines that are, you know. So uh, we shouldn't mix these things. Uh, drawing, the way right now what is happening has introduced because of the two dimensional surface that with which we are engaging all the time, you know, the paper and things like that. So that is why it has become a much more common activity. So uh, this, I think you should read. This is a fantastic, is that okay? So this is by a you know, young child of modern life. Well, that is another thing that, that uh, you know, we must understand that a child never feels that they don't know how to draw. It is when, it, till we convince them that they are not good in drawing, they just don't worry about it. They just draw, draw, draw. Every child will draw, provided that situation is there. So, as I was telling, it was in Sadhana school that we started this exploration, 2011 to 2014. And, uh, uh, and so I will tell you some of the incidences that happened there, which made us uh, reimagine school at the same time, look at drawing in a very different way. So one very important thing that we, we have to understand is that we are not neutral in the sense we are shaped by what we engage with. So probably last time also I mentioned about how cycling is taught by cycle and how swimming is taught by water exactly the same way uh, uh, you know whatever we engage with shapes us so the very good example is that we uh, you know of this the destruction of this is that there are cases of feral children who were looked after by dog and that that child couldn't couldn't walk after that. The child was actually behaving like a dog. There are many examples like that, you know, where the, the child looked after by monkeys took on the quality, the, the qualities and the way the behavior of monkeys. And in, in fact, even a bird, uh, you know, a child has acquired the, you know, the habits of uh, even physical features, meaning in the sense that the hand was being used for wing and uh, lips had turned into beaks. I mean, you know, the, the action. So oh, this is very important to understand that human child absorbs and becomes what it absorbs. This is a very, very important uh, uh, thing to understand. So drawing, I'm making a redefinition of that. Drawing is the playing that children do on two dimensional surface. In three dimensional space, that is the real world children play, meaning recreate experience. And in two-dimensional space also, they begin to abstract the three-dimensional space and start drawing. So uh, another definition is that drawing is the process by which children make sense of the three-dimensional space in terms of two-dimensional space.
So it is a natural activity of abstraction. And, and if you don't interfere, there is a very, very, very clear system to drawing. It's exactly like how a child learns to walk or learns to talk. That, that you know, from crawling, how does the child begin to walk? From blabbering, how does the child begin to speak? Uh, of course, this process I will show you with each of the drawings. Uh, but this is what I want to, you know, right away, uh, you know, uh, share with you. And drawing comes naturally uh, in, in the context of modernity. I'm again correcting this, it's context of modernity. But writing doesn't come naturally to them. Writing requires a different kind of, uh, you know, understanding. And they would draw anywhere. And, but of course, you have to see drawing not as art, not as self-expression, because all this will mislead you. Of course, you will see the problem is that when you when you create a frame to through which to look at, you will see what you are wanting to look at. This is the tragedy, uh, you know that you know that uh, is there. So we need to be absolutely um, clear of any frames, any intellectual conceptual frames. To, to look at this and just just watch what they are doing till the drawings tell you what it is all about and actually what drawing does is it's actually a cognitive tool uh, without observation there's no drawing observation of shape form size process everything that is happening in the world and of course in the same process abstraction imagination reflection it's the same thing that happens what happens in this uh, case of uh, play uh, same thing happens in drawing also of course there is a reduction in terms of it is two-dimensional space and the other one is three-dimensional space so naturally there would be a certain kind of reduction in this and the qualities of observation attention interest all that will happen and it will help them in communication because their experience will be very clear what they're experiencing and aesthetic awareness naturally would happen because of a certain quality that it instills in, in the child. So I want to share with you one very, very interesting video uh, that, that I saw in the school in the first time when, the, when we established this or on the, or on the first day itself. So this was a very, very interesting experience, which changed, challenged all our notions about art. See the child, the first one child started drawing, then another child joined, another child, yet another child. Four children were drawing in one page. They were not asking permission. There was no question of asking permission. There was no question of denying permission. They just worked together. And then when we found that after some time, the one who started left and the others continued. This was a very, very important experience, which challenged all our notions about self-expression, you know, uh, about uh, all that kind of stuff. So, and there was another very interesting video, uh, which was, look at those three children. So this was another very interesting experience. Those three children were combining three-dimensional activity and two-dimensional activity. So in fact, they're completely free from all the rules that modern uh, modernity has created. So they were drawing lines and they were telling that it is the water flowing from the null, from the tap. So we then completely reorganize our space. We, you know, they could draw anywhere with any tools, any time. So, so we created a condition for that, which is what made us, you know, observe children more better. We began to document, we began to store all the drawings they did. Uh, so it is from that, that we are, uh, you know, sharing this uh, learning with you. 
so when they are not uh, engaging with the three dimensional world in the real world they would come and you know so what is very interesting is that the ground the basis for all this is their actual experience they ex whatever they experience they re experience through play and they re experience through drawing so there is a commonality in that you know experience is the basis for all their activities and they were staying near and the school was situated uh, you know uh, in a valley so on the three sides you could see uh, hills and many of them were actually also living in the uh, on various levels of the hills and there were river nearby so whatever they were drawing was actually from their experience itself so now i will start the i will start sharing that why we consider that drawing is a cognitive activity so number one is that children draw what they see so it's interesting that human face of a human being to draw the face first and then slowly the other parts come in so it's the face that comes and it is never the profile it's the front and then animals birds vehicles it is normally the side so what you actually face what you actually see is what you draw so this is very interesting drawing the one on the right here is a windshield because this child used to sit next to the driver and he was so fascinated that this became his subject just the wiper and the and the mirror you know and uh, this is a very rare case of buffalo being drawn um, the reason is that mini had uh, buffalo in her house and she used to feed the buffalo so every morning she would go in front of it and you know because feeding means you have to face the buffalo so naturally she was the only person who drew buffalo right from the front and uh, vehicles and uh, you know animals side view so this is another interesting drawing in which you can see uh, the front view top view and side view so it's like uh, you know the child trying to walk you know sometimes he falls and then crawls so it's a mixture of uh, uh, you know activity that you can see till they have a complete control over they would you know do this kind of uh, things so uh, i will you know so it's the same stage of blabbering crawling and scribbling you can see the similarity in this so scribbling would be you know just what they get they would start scribbling and then slowly 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 uh, you would see a small you know that some clarity begins to happen and even drawing of writing for example uh, is something that children imitate actually you know so i really feel that if you don't interfere even there i'm sure they will learn to you know write also without our help because they they, they are very very good in seeing so i'm sure uh, you know one could experiment with no helping at all with writing and see how children will of course there has to be an exposure of somebody writing you know otherwise that won't happen so this was a fantastic uh, abstraction so that is another thing uh, essence with minimum lines so abstraction is at a particular stage children abstract the essence of things so it would be nice you know if you can uh, uh, maybe write down what you are seeing here i'll come back to this later but you can you know uh, take a guess as to what this is so you can see abstraction of trees even even this on the right or left is uh, uh, just the branches so you can see many many different ways in which children have explored trees now this is vehicles again with minimum lines animals birds and look at this peacock here look at the fantastic imagination 
Now, uh, the next stage I'm going to explain is how a child moves from two-dimensional drawing to three-dimensional drawing. So you can see that initially the child has drawn all the, you know, I mean, all the four wheels and it is with one line the child has drawn it. And here, of course, it's a side drawing. The four wheels are shown as per it is, you know, the way they see it. Uh, so I'm, I'm sharing with you various stages in which the child is exploring, uh, you know, how they are struggling to move from 2D to 3D. But at each stage, there is a, uh, you know, there is, they're trying to understand things in the, in the manner they are able to. So here, there is an attempt to draw the three dimension. You can see the, the way that child has tried it here. So it's so very interesting that they're continuously correcting themselves, trying. You can see this, you know, all the four wheels are there. Still it is in the two dimensional plane. Even this is in the two dimensional plane. You can see slowly, slowly changes happening. And of course, now you see it has reached the three dimension. So here the, the wheels are shown as per in, uh, in 3D. Here also you can see the shift that has happened. See this slight twist, you know, tilt here is what makes the 3D even here in the car, in the bus. You know, there is a slight angular difference that is brought in, you know. So you can see that. So just sharing a bit more, uh, you know, uh, examples so this is a fantastic top view of the of a bus this is something that i think uh, you know officially we learn in fourth year in third year second year engineering or so you know or first year sorry first year engineering how, how something called development of surface or something like that so you can see the same kind of built you know exploration in uh, jeep look at the way that this uh, jeep is drawn here same thing we tried out in uh, cycles and scooters. And this is very, very interesting how the house is being drawn. See, look at the way the step is being tried out. You know, here the 3D attempt is clear. And then another important activity is that children are continuously practicing. There was this child had a 200 page book just filled with only wipers, different types of wipers and windshield. And each time he explores deeply various parts of it. You can see the different, this is again another 200 page book just with different kinds of vehicles. So this is exploring details. So then events in daily life, from words to story, look at this fantastic, you know, short story the child has written. You know, the child, this is only, even in such a stage, the child is trying to tell a story. You know, look at the representation. So you can see slowly the built up. It's like from one word, how do they keep adding more words and how that becomes a story from a sentence to a story, you know? So that's the way that this keeps going. You can see just two drawings and how it became a story. And, and I want to again remind you, there is absolutely no interference, no teaching, nothing that we do with children. And what is also very important is that all these people are identifiable. They are not abstract people. You ask them, they know exactly who this person is. And then with, after each festival, that becomes their, you know, uh, thing to draw. I mean, they play out first. They, uh, you know, turn it into a three-dimensional activity first. And then, you know, they also do 2D. So it's very interesting how they are able to try and uh, understand the way the, the you know, the, uh, the climbing happens, you know, how that organization takes place. It's very interesting, actually. Slowly, 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 
you know they're able to understand that you know in this picture at least you know that uh, how that uh, climbing is taking place so naturally there is a very very clear understanding of uh, you know uh, of things so imagination imagination is a very misunderstood word in modernity because see when you are trapped into linguistic world the only thing you are continuously doing is only imagination but that imagination has nothing to do with reality because to actually to read means you're continuously imagining a written word you can only imagine but what you see a real thing there is no need of imagination so imagination in the context of real world is imagination of the concrete something that you have seen in absence of that you imagine that you know so this is uh, th this tree this is interesting that there are three uh, swings and there were many many drawings of this nature you know and many of them told that th th there is a quarrel in the house because there is only one swing so it's interesting how they are compensating in the drawing i remember another drawing by a child who had gone to kashmir srinagar and when she came back she did a drawing of a scenery with two sons so she was asked why there are two sons in srinagar so her answer was srinagar is so cold that they require two sons so this is another fantastic imagination this person is zoe a friend from america and and she was pregnant so in her in the children's drawing you can see that baby zoe also here and this is a cat inside a cat inside the cat so there are three generations right here i don't think you know this kind of imagination we can teach children so